I'm David Can here with another question bank question from topic 9. We're looking at simple harmonic motion without getting into simple harmonic motion equations. Uh, the first is about the nature of simple harmonic motion. We have a body that's displaced from equilibrium and we want to state two conditions that are necessary to execute SHM, simple harmonic motion. Uh, so the two conditions, this is a common question, it's always the same. Uh, acceleration must be proportional and uh, opposite to displacement. That's the two marks. Acceleration has to be proportional, one mark, and op opposite, the other mark, to displacement. This means we have a restoring force. So as you get pushed away from uh, your equilibrium position, the acceleration is in the opposite direction to that displacement. Uh, and the acceleration grows the further you go out. Uh, part B, we're told about a simple model of a methane molecule uh, where a hydrogen atom and the carbon atom can be regarded as two masses attached by a spring. So we have a spring oscillator. The hydrogen atom is much less massive than the carbon atom, such that any displacement of the carbon atom may be ignored. So we're just talking about a carbon atom on a spring connected to the uh, hydrogen atom, and that's the one that's going to be oscillating back and forth. In the graph below, we have uh, the variation with time t of the displacement x uh, from the equilibrium position of the hydrogen atom in the model of the methane. So the hydrogen atom bounces, starts up, bounces down through the equilibrium position, back up again and down again and up again and down again. We want to use this information in the graph. Uh, to determine the amplitude of the oscillation. To help us, we're given the mass of the hydrogen atom, which is going to show up later. First off, for the amplitude, though, that's relatively straightforward. That's just the distance from the peak to the equilibrium position. And we can read that right off the table, 1.5. Now, the only tricky thing about this question is you need to remember to check the units on your x-axis. So it winds up being not 1.5 meters, but 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. For part two, we want to show that the frequency of the oscillation is 9.1 times 10 to the 13 hertz. Uh, frequency is not on the graph. Instead, we have time on the x-axis. From the time, we can get the period, and the period is related to the frequency. The frequency is 1 divided by the period. Now, the period is the time that it takes for one copy of the motion to take place. So you might imagine going from peak to peak. But the thing that I don't like about going from peak to peak in this particular question is that getting the exact spot of that peak is a little rough. I think we can do a little better if we go from this x-intercept to this x-intercept. We get a full copy of the motion, up and down and back. And I think we can read those points a little bit better. Between here and here, there are 0 0.05 units of time. So that's 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14. 0 .14. Same here, 0 0.00, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. And that allows us to say that the frequency is 1 divided by that separation, 0 0.14 take 0 0.03. And again, we check our units. All of that is times 10 to the negative 13. You punch that into the calculator and you do get 9.1 times 10 to the, oops, positive 13 hertz. All right. Moving on to part C, we're going to assume that the motion of the hydrogen atom is simple harmonic and its frequency of oscillation can be given by this expression. K is the force per unit displacement, so it's a spring constant uh, between the hydrogen atom and the carbon atom, and MP is the mass of a proton. Uh, or we could consider it to be 
the mass of the hydrogen atom, which we're given, 1.7. We want to show that the value of k is approximately 560 newtons per meter, so we need to solve this equation for k. We'll do that by multiplying across by 2 pi, and we'll get 2 pi f. At the same time, we'll square both sides, and then multiply across by the mass of a proton, and that gives us k. So k is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, 9.1 times 10 to the 13 hertz squared times the mass of a proton, 1.7 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. You punch that into your calculator and you get about 560. Uh, and the units, of course, are newtons per meter they're given. All right. Now, estimate using your answer for k the maximum acceleration of the hydrogen atom. So we're, we're going to be using the spring constant. Um, one of the equations that we know that contains the spring constant is Hooke's law, f equals kx, or f is proportional to kx. We'll, we'll not worry about the negative sign. Just the, the maximum, the force in whatever direction is equal to kx. Uh, we want the maximum acceleration, and the maximum acceleration occurs when we have our maximum displacement. So we're going to get a maximum force at the maximum displacement, and the maximum force is related to acceleration through Newton's law, f equals ma. So the force which, comes from, which we can calculate using Hooke's law is on any other force, and we can calculate, or we can use f equals ma to help us uh, understand that force. So we can say that the force generated from Hooke's law when we have our maximum displacement generates our maximum acceleration. Solving for maximum acceleration, we get k times that maximum acceleration divided by the mass. We know what k is. The maximum acceleration we found in part 1, 1 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. And we'll divide all of that by the mass of the hydrogen atom. And that gives us 5 times 10 to the 19, if I'm not mistaken, meters per second. Yeah, 19 meters per second squared. Excuse me. 